Let's talk about the number three raised to the power of two. What does this actually mean, right? Three to the power of two. It means three times three. We all know this. We've learned what exponents are. And when we have an exponent here, we just take this three, which is what we call the base, and we multiply it times itself. And there are two of these threes here multiplied, and that's what three squared means. Now, what if I change the problem? So instead of three squared, I have three squared, and I multiply it by three to the power of four right? What would this look like? Well, if we think about it, if we go over here and write the answer to something like this, the first part, 3 squared, is just 3 times 3, right? That's the first thing. But then this is multiplied by this thing, which is 3 to the power of 4. And this is written as 3 multiplied times 3 multiplied times 3 multiplied times 3. Now, the first things here, this is the 3 squared. And the last four of them, this is three to the fourth power, right? But notice what's going on. We're multiplying these, these terms here that have the exponents in there, and they have exactly the same base. The three is, is the base of both of these, so that's why it's a bunch of threes multiplied uh, times, times themselves. And in the first part, we have two of them multiplied, and then the last part, we have four of them multiplied like this, but all of them are multiplied together. So what would happen if we wanted to simplify something like this? We have three times three, but then times three times three times three times three. What would all of this stuff look like if we wanted to kind of simplify this, which is what it is when we multiply out? It's gonna be three to the power of one, two, three, four, five, six. Three to the power of six. So what we're basically saying is three squared times three to the power of four is equal to three to the power of six. But notice that this is the same thing as just taking the two exponents that we have in the beginning, three to the power of two, and we add it to the other exponent, three to the power of four. So the bottom line is, there's a very important rule here that you're going to use basically for the rest of your life in math. And that is when you multiply two terms that have exponents together, then if the bases are the same, three is the same as three here, when they're the same, then all you do is you add the exponents together. And so you get, we get six here because two plus four is six. This works for anything, no matter what the base is. Here the base was three. And so it was a bunch of threes multiplied together. But I could easily change the problem and make it, let's say five to the power of four times five to the power of one. I'm claiming that because the bases are the same, this is going to be five to the power of four plus one right, which is five to the power of five. Now let's check and see if this is actually right. What we would have here, five to the power of four is five times five times five times five. There's four of them there, but then we're multiplying times five to the power of one, which is this guy here. So this right here, this is five to the power of four, and we're multiplying it. Five to the power of one is this guy right here. And what do we get? It's all multiplied together. So it's five to the power of one, two, three, four, five which is exactly what we predicted before. So a lot of students memorize these rules. Oh, when you multiply exponents, uh, terms with exponents, if the bases are the same, we add the exponents, but they don't often know why we do that. It just comes about because the definition of the exponent is all the stuff multiplied times itself. And this one, same thing. So if the bases are the same, like this, then we can simply add the exponents together. It only works when the bases are the same because of the way the multiplication works. Now let's change the problem to more of like an algebra sort of thing. And let's say we have not a base of two or three, but a base of x to the power of two multiplied by x to the power of three, right? What does this actually mean? Well, in this case, the base is some unknown thing, but whatever the base is, we call it x, it's the same base because whatever x is, it's here squared and it's also here squared. This is the same as we had the same bases of three here and the same bases of five here. They had to match. Here, the bases match as well. So what this is gonna look like if you blow it out, this one is going to be x, times x, so this we called x squared, but we're multiplying this whole thing times x cubed, which is x times x times x. And so this one is x cubed. So what's gonna happen when you multiply all this stuff together? What you're gonna get, x squared times x cubed, you're going to get, you have one, two, three, four, five of them, x to the fifth power. And notice that this is the same thing since the bases are the same, you just have the same base raised to the two plus three power. 
So this is the same thing as x to the 2 plus 3 power. So basically, when the bases are the same, then we're allowed to, and they're multiplied together, then we're allowed to add these exponents together. This only works when you're, when you're multiplying things, because if you multiply x squared and you multiply that times x cubed, then you're stringing all these x's together, and so the exponent just becomes larger. All right? Looks very complex, but when you know what you're doing and you know why you're doing it, then it's not hard at all. Let's take a look at a slightly more complex problem. What about 2 times a to the fourth multiplied times a to the third? Now, for the first few problems, I'm going to write all of the exponents out to show you what you're doing. But then after the first few problems, we're going to stop writing everything out and we're just going to use the rule. And the rule is we can add the exponents together if we're multiplying terms with exponents and the bases have to be the same. The bases must be the same. So what does this kind of thing look like? We have a number involved, but that number is just multiply times a to the fourth. So it's 2 times a times another a times another a times another a. This whole thing is 2 times a to the fourth power. That's what it means. But we're multiplying by three more a's. So multiply times a times a and then another final times a. And this last thing is a to the third. So what we're doing is we're multiplying this thing times this thing, but this is just two multiplied by four a's. And then this one is just three a's multiplied together. But both things are multiplied together in the end. So what we get when we do this is just the two, it just sits there because there's an invisible one like in front of in front of every term with a variable, there's an invisible one. You multiply the numbers as usual, but there's just a one there. So it's just a two. And then the a, how many do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so it's two a to the seventh power. But notice what we've done is we just take the numbers and multiply all numbers together, but there are no other numbers here other than the invisible one. So the two goes into the answer. And then the bases of the, of the exponents are the same. So the a comes down, same base. And then we just add these exponents together to make a seven. And so this writing everything out business, we're gonna drop that in a second, but that's what's actually happening. That's why we're able to add these exponents together. All right, let's take a look at another one. Let's take a look at three times B multiplied by B squared. Let's see if we can write the answer and then do the expanded form. Well, we're basically saying that when we multiply terms like this, we multiply all numbers together because when we blow it all out, the numbers are going to be written in there, but there are no other numbers, so the three just goes into the answer. But then we have b times b squared, same base. So the b goes into the answer and we add exponents, but there's no exponent here. You might say there's nothing there, but really there's an invisible one here, because b by itself is b to the first power. So this is really a one plus two, which is a b to the third power. So that is the final answer, but let's just write it out just to see what it looks like. This term, the 3b is just 3 times b. This term is just b times b because b squared is b times b, but both of them are multiplied together. So what do you have? 3 here and then b times b times b, that's b cubed. This is the definition of the exponent there. So we're going to write them out to kind of like give you practice, but all you need to do is multiply the numbers together and then if you have the same bases, then you just add those exponents together and combine them. And this is called simplifying expressions that involve exponents because this is not as simple as this. You know, this here is not as simple as this. So just like we learned to simplify fractions, just like we learned how to simplify, you know, other things in math, we're going to be simplifying these terms that involve exponents. All right, let's do the same kind of thing again. Let's take a look at two times y to the second power multiplied by four times y to the fifth power. Now, before blowing it all out, let's see if we can figure out what the answer will probably be. We have two terms multiplied together. We always just multiply numbers together. This is two times four, positive two times positive four, which is eight. But then we have also these exponents multiplied together, or these terms with exponents. It has the same base. So the base will go into our answer and we can add the exponents, which is two plus five, if you wanna write it like that. Then it'll be eight y to the seventh power, and that's it, and there's not much work to show other than to know that you multiply the numbers and then if the bases are the same, you just add the exponents. Now, again, we'll do it just for a few more problems. What does this look like? This is two times y squared, which is y times y, right? And this one is four multiplied by five of these y's. One, and there's number two, and there's number three, 
and there's number four, and there's, I can write a y correctly, number five. But this term is multiplied by this term, so there's a dot between them. So because you have the numbers, this is two times y times y times four times y, 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 and so on. Notice that when you multiply a long string of things, the order of the multiplication doesn't matter. You know, two times three times one is the same times one times two times three. Any things that you multiply together, you can always rearrange the order and you always get the, the uh, uh, same answer. That's called the associative property of multiplication. We talked about that a long time ago, right? So because we can rearrange the order of multiplications, we could write it like two times four, moving the four over there, and then these two y's right here, and then all of these, and then we have another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and another one. And so then we multiply the numbers together to get eight, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these y's there. So again, we're not gonna write it out every time, but I need you to, know what you're doing. The reason you're multiplying the numbers is because everything gets multiplied anyway, and then of course you can multiply the numbers. When the bases are the same, all of them can be written together and make a new exponent where the exponent is just the addition of the two exponents you had in the original problem. But the bases, the thing you're raising to the power, must be the same in order to combine them like this. Now let's take a look at something a little more complex. What about negative three x multiplied by five x squared? Now, this one's different because there's a negative three in front. What do you think you're going to do? I've been telling you that when you have these things multiplied together, just multiply the numbers. So five times negative three is negative 15, right? Because negative times positive is negative. And then we have these x's multiplied together, same base. Here's an exponent of two. Here's an exponent of invisible one. One plus two is three, so we write this as x to the third power. So it's negative 15 x to the third power. Now, just for clarity, this is negative three times x, and this one is five times x times x, because it's x squared, but they're all multiplied together. So if I wanted to, I could rearrange the five and the, the negative three together. That would multiply to give me the negative 15, and all the x's would sit next to each other, which would give me x to the third power. All right, I think we'll just do maybe one or two more problems with kind of like blowing it out, and then after that, we'll just continue on. Let's take a look at negative two a cubed. And then we're gonna multiply that by negative four a cubed. Now I chose to wrap this in parentheses. This looks clear because whatever this is, it's multiplied by whatever this is. Now let me show you what happens if you remove the parentheses. And instead of putting parentheses, you just put a little dot right there because that means they're multiplied as well. It means the same thing, this negative term is multiplied by this one, but it's easy to miss the dot. So it, it looks like subtraction. It looks like this is subtraction at a glance. So it's better when you have negative terms to wrap it in parentheses. And if you want to, you could wrap this in parentheses. You don't have to, but you could. And this is very clearly that this term is multiplied times this term. So what do you think we will get? Well, we say we just multiply numbers, right? This is a negative two times a negative four. Negative times negative is positive, and four times two is eight. Here we have the same base, for these exponents, and the exponent of both is three. Three plus three is six, so it's a positive eight a to the sixth power. Now let's blow this one out and see if we agree. This one is negative two times a times a times a, because that's a cubed, right? And this one is negative four times a times a times another a and they're multiplied together. So to make sure we understand with the same problem here, I don't wanna put a dot here. So I'm gonna kinda of like wrap parentheses around there so it's clear that we're multiplying them together. So I could rearrange the numbers together, it's gonna to give me a positive eight, and then all the a's will be together and there are six of them. So I think at this point, maybe we'll do one more where we kind of blow everything out underneath it, but after that we're gonna stop doing it. Let's take a look at five times y multiplied times two multiplied by negative three y to the fourth. You see how this can kind of look like subtraction? So instead of writing it like that, I'm gonna put this last term in parentheses, and this means all of these are multiplied together. There's an invisible multiplication here. Now, what do you think is going to happen? Well, we multiply all numbers together, right? Five times two is 10, and then this 10 times negative three is gonna be negative 30, because 10 times three is 30, and this will be a positive 10 times a negative gives me a negative. Now I have y here and then y to the fourth, same base. So I can write this as y to the fifth because it's four plus one. There's an invisible 
exponent of one right here. So the answer is negative 30 y to the fifth. So let's blow this out. What is this right here? This is just five times y. What is this right here? It's just the number two. And what is this right here? This is negative three times y to the fourth, which is one y, there's number two, there's number three, there's number four. So this is all multiplied together. I'll make my dots real big. And you can rearrange the numbers. You can, when you multiply things, the numbers can go in any order you want. So I can write this as five times two times, I could put that negative three in parentheses to make it clear, and then times this y, and then four more of them. Right here, we'll have one, two, three, four. These are these four, this one comes from here, and then all the numbers are together. What do you have? Five times two is 10, times negative three is negative 30, and then all five of the y's are there as well. So from this point forward, I'm not going to kind of write everything out. We need to learn to look at the expressions and know what to do. And I've done enough of them where you should be convinced of what you're doing. Certainly you can write these out if you need to, to write them out, absolutely. But for the rest of this lesson, we're not gonna do that. Let's take a look at three times b squared times negative two times b to the fourth power times negative two times b to the third. Now this can get a little complex when we have so many things going on. So let's just focus on multiplying and, and kind of like simplifying the first two terms just by themselves, right? What would happen if we just multiply these first two terms? Forget about this one, we'll do that later. Well, three times negative two, we multiply the numbers, we get negative six, right? And then these get multiplied, same base, and we add two plus four, which is six. So it's b to the sixth power. So these multiplied together give us this, and now we finally need to multiply by this negative two b to the third power. All right, but here we have a negative six times a negative two. That's a positive number, positive 12. We have the same base multiply, but we add the exponent, six plus three is nine, six b to the nine. And so the answer is 12 b to the ninth power. Now, you don't have to do it in two steps. If you want, in your mind, you could say, well, three, uh, times this is gonna give me negative six, and then negative six times negative two is positive 12, and then you say this b and this b and this b, it's gonna be a b in the answer, two plus four is six, and then six plus three is nine. So you can do it all in one step, but sometimes it is a little bit better for us to break it up. All right, only two more problems. What about x squared multiplied by seven x to the third power multiplied by two x? All right, so same sort of thing. Let's try to do this one all in one step because it's not so, so bad really. There's an invisible one in front of this as a coefficient times seven is just seven and seven times two is 14. So we multiply our numbers together and then we can have it, we have exponents with the same base here. So we add them, two plus three is five and then five plus one more here, there's an invisible x to the first, one more is six. So it's 14 x to the sixth power. 14 x to the sixth power, that's the answer. Now, if you wanna do it in little separate steps, first let's multiply just these. So what are we going to get? The seven times invisible one is seven, and then we have x to the, we add these, fifth power. So that's what happens when we multiply this, but we still have to multiply by two x. And then we multiply the numbers, seven times two is 14, and we have the same base, so five plus invisible one is six power, get the same thing. So whether or not you, kind of break up your steps or not, you're going to get the correct answer either way. All right, I think I'm gonna solve the very last problem on this, on this uh, board right over here. I think we have plenty of room. Let's take a look at negative four a cubed multiplied by negative two a squared multiplied by negative six a to the fifth power. Now I actually do think that it is uh, a little bit easier to do this in steps because you have so many negative numbers, you, you don't want to do too many things at once. So let's just focus on multiplying these first two terms together. What do we get? Negative four times negative two, four times two is eight, negative times negative is positive, so it's positive eight. But we have these exponents, we have the same base, so the exponent is gonna also, the, the base will be the same, but three plus two is five. So this whole thing works out to eight, eight to the fifth, and we still need to multiply by negative six, a to the fifth power. We multiply numbers. Eight times six is 48, but positive times negative means it's negative 48. And we have these same bases here, so we add the exponents. Five plus five is 10, 
so it's a to the 10th power. So it's negative 48 a to the 10th power. So I want you to really look at what you've accomplished during this lesson. We started, all, started out talking about very simple things with exponents, three squared, you know, three squared times three to the fourth, and how to simplify them just with numbers and getting you comfortable. And then we moved into very simple problems with just a couple of little exponents running around, and we finally ended the day with what anybody would consider to be pretty tough looking, but then hopefully by the end of it, you can see that even tough looking problems like that really aren't. You just have to know how to tackle it and how to get confidence in what you're doing. So when you first learn this stuff, you don't know, nobody knows to add exponents and if the bases are the same or they're not this, nobody knows that stuff. You only get it through practice. So go through this lesson again, write every all these problems down and solve them yourself. When you're getting down to the end and you're getting the right answers and you know what to do and you feel comfortable, then follow me onto part two. We'll make them even more complex to give you more practice with multiplying terms that contain exponents. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.